Mindset Warriors, Vestine the Mindset Mom here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about something that could at first make us a little bit uncomfortable, um, but just bear with me because just like when you get a splinter and you pull it out or you you know need to put medicine in a wound, at first it stings, but then the healing comes and it is just a wonderful thing for your life and your business. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about that yellow-bellied monster called apathy. Now, apathy is actually defined as um, a lack of interest or enthusiasm or concern. It's a feeling of indifferent or a lack of a showing of emotion. And it often is a sign of depression, okay? And today I'm gonna expose how this can be the very culprit that's keeping you stuck, keeping your business from moving forward, keeping you from bringing your A-game, keeping you from up-leveling, keeping um, you um, unfulfilled and really in a rut concerning your business, your relationships, your relationships with your children, um, you reaching your fullest potential and achieving those dreams and goals. Now, I talk about apathy um, because I do think it is something that is really plaguing a lot of people right now. And I speak from experience because I have experienced it myself. So please do not feel like I'm judging you in any way, shape or form. I have dealt with apathy for many years in my life. If you go back and you watch my story about how I over came um, PMDD and there was a lot of apathy involved in that a lot of depression and things like this so I I I I tend to think I'm maybe not an expert, but I really do. I'm very familiar with its pattern, with what it does. And today I want to help expose the lie for what it is because it really is a lie. Okay. And um, so I may look down at my notes occasionally, but that's because I want to, I want to do a comprehensive view of what this is because it affects so many people and it is really what is keeping us back from attaining our all and really making an impact in the world today okay so uh, first of all though I want to tell you a little story once upon a time there was this king and he was a very very powerful king he was he was amazing um, he had just um, a huge army around him he was fierce in battle he won every battle that he fought on the battlefield and he was very aware of having like loyal people around him and so he was very um, on his guard most of the time except he had this one advisor who would come in and he would advise him on certain strategies for war certain strategies um, and things running the business of the kingdom but this person would come in and the person started just dripping uh, very slowly dripping on him um, seeds of doubt or you know it, it first ap appeared like he would say like are you sure this would be the the most advantageous decision for your royal highness and the king started to look at things from a different perspective according to this advisor and he would start second guessing some of the decisions that he had made and some of the commitments that he had made to his people and little you know unbeknownst to him even though he had the loyalty of all of his subjects in his kingdom and he won every fierce battle on the battlefield and he took lands and he took um, uh, uh, spoil in in war um, little did he know that this one particular advisor whom he trusted the most who became the most familiar to him who stood by his side in most situations and attended him in court little did he know that that advisor had an agenda and a an ambition of his own and slowly over time he began to wear the king down to where the king started to grow despondent and he didn't know why he started to get depressed and he didn't know why but pretty soon the advisors voice almost became like his own voice um, so much so in fact that um, the king started to even make assumptions even before his advisor would even open his mouth and as as a story goes um, this king lost everything he lost everything because there was a breach in his walls there was a breach in his discernment because he had not 
recognized that this advisor was actually an enemy, that it, he had a um, an, an opposing agenda to go against the king. And what he did was he wore him down over a very long period of time. This was a very slow process. And that's exactly what apathy does, okay? Apathy will present itself as your own thoughts. But we really need to pull back the curtain and call it for what it is. It really is just a lie. Okay. Apathy will get the king. That's you. That's me. We're royalty. We are called to make, we are called to bring greatness to this earth and to make an impact on this earth. And it will cause royalty, you and me, to doubt our greatness. So much so, in fact, that we will abdicate our responsibility. And that's where the lack of concern and the lack of enthusiasm comes in. There's also a, a story of another king down uh, in history that actually it was his downfall that when it was the time for kings to be at war, um, some scholars say that was in the spring, I'm not sure, but that is actually at the time when the kings were supposed to be at war. He was at home taking his leisure, just chilling, just relaxing, just vibing at home, and that's actually when he fell to temptation. So this apathy, this yellow-bellied monster, it really is because it's, it's a lack of courage. It's like a coward. I guess why I call it yellow-bellied. It actually um, takes advantage of not just circumstances, but it takes advantage of time. You actually have to counter it with some things and some steps that I'm going to give you toward the end of the video. And also um, stick around because I'm going to let you know something from my own life is that I've been struggling with lately. And I'm going to tell you why I actually have been avoiding housework lately. And for a stay-at-home mom, you know, that's not such a great thing, but, um, but it just goes to show the power of what I am saying. Now, now, um, now, with apathy, uh, you really uh, want to be uh, going by uh, how it operates, okay? Because let me ask you a question. How have you been presenting yourself to your highest commitments lately? What kind of energy have you been bringing to your business or businesses in some cases for, for many of you? How have you been bringing your energy or your attitude or your focus to your relationships? How have you been bringing your energy and your intention and your focus to your children? Because what apathy does, it, it can make things just seem like normal everyday life and pretty soon minutes go by, then days, then years, then decades, and pretty soon you realize that this traitor has actually stolen your blessings and get this, it has done it with your full permission, okay? So I want us to think about this. So this is why I'm kind of dealing harshly with this because it is, we're, we're just not gonna soft foot around this. We are going to turn and we're going to fight this thing because you can do it and it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much to get rid of apathy in your life. Remember, we're talking about depression. You know how depression can kind of sink down like a wet blanket over everything? It's almost like a fog that comes in really, really slowly, right? But I'm going to give you some ways to think about apathy and to identify it in your life and some things that you're going to do to the apathy that I find and give you that is going to make all the difference in the world. Now, before I get into that, I want to break down the word apathy. We looked at the definition of apathy, but I want to show you just how like um, just gross this um, this concept is in the word apathy we have you know how we we think of people like that we we say something is we dis, it's distasteful we, we call it pathetic you know something that's pathetic is not just, just distasteful it's actually weak and so when you work look at the word um, apathetic Look at that. You see the word pathetic right in the word apathetic and apathetic is describing apathy, okay? If something is apathetic, it's like apathy. It's, it has the, the, the condition or the um, characteristics of apathy. And so when something is apathetic, you can think play on words, it's pathetic, right? So what is the fruit of apathy? 
you become pathetic, you become weak, you become, you, you're, you become inept to actually crush your dreams and goals. This is why I'm dealing with this so head on. This is why I'm dealing with this kind of with an intense energy of my own because it really does steal our blessings. It really does rob us blind of everything that not only us guys, it actually robs our descendants, our children of the blessings and the inheritance that belongs to them. Okay. So when we're talking about apathy, we just need to turn that towards that giant of apathy and we need to take that bad boy down. We need to see it for what it is and we just need to confront it head on. Apathy does not like confrontation, okay? So if you feel a need to like, oh, you know, don't turn that channel because that could be a symptom of apathy trying to get you away from the information that it's actually going. We're talking about real energies here, guys. And we're talking about real opposers, real um, opponents, adversaries that we have in our life that keep us back. Um, it's like darkness. Uh, it keeps us back from enjoying fullness, enjoying abundance, enjoying all the things that, you know, we deserve in this life according to the authority that we walk in on the earth. And so that's why I want us to um, come up with a plan. Okay. So first step, once we identify the apathy and it really, really apathy, just, um, it sounds like your own thoughts, but it also tries to get you distracted. Okay. So apathy for some people might look like what is, um, going on, getting distracted by the next, um, taking the next drink. What's the next dessert? What's the next relationship? What's my next mentor, my next course, my next guru, the next person to tell me what to do. Are you starting to see the pattern? Like that advisor, to the king just tell me I'm looking outside myself to know what to do and that was the king's downfall guys that's what he did that was so um, con you know damning in the end because he didn't rely on the power that was within himself and that is when you start to get into trouble when you start looking outside of yourself to your circumstances to your reality rather than relying on the inner self, the real true you, then you start to get in that danger zone. And if those of you who follow my channel know that, you know, the inner reality is so very important. That's why we build it up through prayer, through meditation, through focusing on our goals, through getting that focus. You have to have that focus. And because focus brings power, it actually, you're allowed, you know, you're more able to bring your powerful energy to something. And we're going to get into what to do now. First of all, <clears throat> we need to stop thinking that the apathy is the real you. That apathy, that is not the real you. And the sooner you get out of agreement with it because it is a lie, the sooner you can turn and confront it and bring it down. So that's going to, that's going to, um, require for you to take some level of responsibility in your own life concerning apathy. You have to understand that this is not the real you. It's not the real thoughts. It's not your, you, you, your authentic self, right? And that's what we want to do here. We want to build up in a mindset warrior type of way. We want to build up our authentic self so that we can really show up in our lives, every area of our life, not just one, not just two, everything, because it will, taking this giant down will affect everything. You just have to make a decision. You just have to take responsibility. You just have to turn and say, no more. I'm not putting up with this anymore and get out of agreement with it. That's all you have to do, guys. Isn't that wonderful news? Okay. We really need to agree with the truth. Okay. So when you identify apathy, you take responsibility for it. Agreeing with the truth is going to be your power source. It's going to be like plugging a, um, a cord into a socket, okay? Then the energy will flow. You really need to hold on to the truth. And like I said, apathy is not the real you. They are lies. It's what the lies that it's, it's, it's underlying everything that we in mindset, in the mindset world call limiting beliefs or self-sabotage. So this is what we need to do. We need to confront it. You need to take responsibility, but you need to cling to the truth. If you are having trouble knowing what that truth is, knowing what it is for you, knowing what, you know, having that well of truth come up, you can do several things. One of the things is you need to get quiet. 
and you need to eliminate all distractions. That's why it's good to, you know, get rid of TV, get rid of um, media, even news media, guys, for a while because you wouldn't believe how much that can infiltrate and start to make your worldview go a certain way. Pretty soon you're getting off the path to your dreams and goals. Sorry for my screens back there. They just flash and do wonky things. They have a mind of their own. <laughs> anyway, um, so you want to be sure that you are agreeing with the truth, okay? Um, start with meditation. Start with getting quiet every day. That's why we meditate. That's why we get down to that truth. And um, if you're not sure what area the lie is in, I'll give you a little hint. What you can do is ask yourself this question. What is it, because if you're having, listen, we all have blind spots, right? We all have difficulty seeing what's in our own lives that's actually um, detrimental to us. So one of the things that I've learned is that you can actually ask yourself, what is it in other people that actually irks you the most? Like, what is it in other people that just drives you nuts? You're just like, oh, that person, I just, uh, this about him or that about him. Oftentimes, you are doing that because you feel on some level, even if it's subconscious, that is actually a trait in yourself that you dislike. And let me tell you something, apathy and self-contempt go hand in hand. They really do. And so that's why it's really important to be able to take that thing that we are just drives us nuts in another person and be able to turn the focus on us and say, do I have that quality? It's kind of like take the plank out of your own eye before you can take the speck out of your own brother's eye. This is what, what is meant, and I'm telling you, it is a big plank in many of our eyes, myself included, so don't feel condemned, okay? I'm never condemning you. I'm always on your side. I'm your cheerleader. I want success for you, and this is we're just dealing with family business today. That's all, right? We just need to do this. So, Anyway, that's one little tip that you can do. The next thing that you can do to confront this and get rid of apathy in your life is to have the courage to ask yourself, have the courage, okay, to ask yourself, what am I meant to do? What was I put on this earth to do? Now, this may take some soul searching, so don't just gloss over this one. This is a very, very important one, if not the most important one, okay? Because it, it, if you get clear on this, you might even be able to turn and see where the self-sabotage comes in. Where do you get opposed? When you start to think about that thing that, oh, I just, that would just light me up to just really be able to do A, B, or C. And then, boom, the attack comes. You're wondering in, in your circumstances, why is this going on? Like, you know, you start off to go toward that thing and then something comes, it just totally disrupts it. That could be a clue. Now, you really need to get clarity on this because this is an important thing. This is an important thing in mindset. It has to do with your why, but that's only scratching the surface. You could have a why that you think is your why, but your calling is something completely different. And so that's really important that you get have a really honest conversation with yourself and get quiet and say, what is it I'm meant to do on this earth? Yes, it's to be a good parent. Yes, it's to be a good spouse. All those things are good. Yes, it's to do well in business. But there's something inside of you that's crying to get out, that's wanting to make an impact in the world. And guess what? You're the only one who can do it. And that's why this conversation is so important. You must find out what you're meant to do. Once you do that, that is a huge thing, okay? Whatever it is, it's huge, all right? And you're gonna find out like, what is it? It might even be something that you're, you dis discounted. Okay. I want to point that out because apathy can do that. It might be something that you told yourself, well, I can't do that. I can't write a book. I can barely write my name. I can't build a business. I, I don't have number sense in my head. I can't fill in the blank. I can't be a better spouse. This person is A, B, or C. I can't, um, I can't relate to my kid. They just think I'm nuts. So, you wanna be sure to confront each and every lie at the place, especially if it has to do with what you're meant to do and called to do on the earth, okay? And finally, be ready, willing, and capable, okay? Be ready, I'm gonna slow down and say that again. Be ready, willing, and capable of doing that thing. 
of doing what you are meant to do on the earth. Now, what does that mean? For most of us, all it means is I take that next right step. I just do the next right thing. That's it. I just do the next right thing. What is the next right thing for you? Is it to learn something? Is it to relearn something or repeat something? Is it to try something? Is it to apologize for something? Is it to understand someone else's perspective? Is it to put the past behind you? If so, this is what we're talking about. I bet you will see the apathy lift like, like crazy. And, it, and you know what? We might think that apathy right now is a part of our personality. Oh, that's just who I am. Oh, but once you confront it and you get rid of it, you're going to find out who you truly are. And I want to end with this another story, okay? Oh, and if you get caught in confusion or just a, a way of not being able to meet these out, and I'll try to put these by number in the video, if you get stuck at any one of these numbers, go back to number one. You can always go back to number one, okay? Go back, go back, find out, find out, you know, start taking responsibility and find out what you're making excuses about, okay? You can always go back to number one and go through the steps many, many times, okay? So I want to end on a story that is really powerful, okay? There's a story in the Bible about a man named Jacob. Now, Jacob was a twin, and he and his brother Esau were both, they were, Esau was hairy and uh, red, and that's actually where his name uh, comes from. And Jacob was smooth-skinned, and they both were raised, even though they were raised in the same household, they both had very different lifestyles. Jacob was often stayed to the tents, and he was like a shepherd, and he just kind of hang around the hung around the family, he listened to all the stories, you know, that were passed on because oral tradition was really big back then. And he picked up on all the nuances about the stories and the language and all these, you know, cultural things. And whereas Esau was a man of the field, he was a hunter. He would go out and hunt, and he brought, you know, um, they call it game. He brought he brought game to his father, who his father loved, you know, his son's food. Um, and, and some, some family kind of wranglings ensued. And so, um, but the main, the main thing is that when Jacob was running from his brother Esau, because he knew his brother wanted to kill him, uh, because there's some incident with some, some stew, some lentil stew, you know, um, go back and read the story if you want to brush up on it. But the point is that Jacob was in the wilderness. Now the name Jacob means supplanter or deceiver. Okay. Now we're not talking about characters, you know, like, like caricatures, you know, um, there were things that, um, you know, just like you and me, they did that were good. And there were things that they did that were not so good. And Jacob actually, when he was born, they would often name the child after a, a situation or a characteristic of that child's birth. And, um, um, Jacob grabbed the heel of Esau when, when Esau was born first and Jacob actually had a hole of the heel. That's why they named him Supplanter. Okay. And he ended up, you know, kind of living out the meaning of his name, Deceiver, because there was some deception involved in the story. If you go back and read about that. So Jacob means Deceiver. But one night he was um, laying there in the desert, just sleeping, you know, um, right there. And uh, the angel of the Lord appeared. And he wrestled with Jacob and the, and, and it says that he wrestled all night long. And when dawn started to break, uh, Jacob asked him, he said, you know, don't, I won't let you go until you bless me. And the angel of the Lord told him, he actually gave him a new name. The name that he gave Jacob was Israel. And the name Israel actually means to, um, to contend. It's one who contends with God and with man and overcomes. And he actually changed Jacob's name because he came face to face with the, the Most High right there in the desert. And I would dare say he came face to face with himself. He went from being a deceiver to being one who wrestles with God and man and overcomes. So let me ask you this question today. What is your name? What is your name? Is it connected to apathy? Is it connected to the lies that we've been taking on and ingesting and thinking they're our own thoughts? Or is your name destiny? 
I want to leave you with that thought today. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today on Mindset Mom. I love each and every one of you. I'm so happy that you visited my channel. And I hope to bring content that's life-changing as well as uplifting. And if you are new to my channel and you have not yet subscribed to me, if you've gotten value today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, like it. And hey, if there's somebody that could use some encouragement or really struggling with this kind of battle in their lives, go ahead and share this video with them. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye now.